Welcome to Invest Insights. I'm Abby Malone. I'm joined today by Ted Bloom, the managing shareholder for Greenberg Traurig of the Atlanta office. Welcome, Ted. Good morning. Thank you very much. Last year, when we spoke with you for the Focus Atlanta report, you mentioned that you thought we were going to see a constant flow of legislative efforts federally, statewide, and locally to solve the disruption that had been caused by the pandemic. Looking back now, what legislative efforts were the most disruptive and transformative to your business practices and operations? And do you find them to be beneficial or detrimental? Well, we saw a lot. I mean, there were multiple attempts at multiple levels to deal with this pandemic and the disruption was severe for people. It appended lives, it made people uncertain about what the trajectories were going to be, but legislative initiatives made a difference. The PPP loans, stimulus packages, and businesses and individuals really redoubled their efforts to put their heads down and try to make some lemonade out of this, these lemons. Sure. And I don't want to be dismissive of the hardship because the hardship has been terribly difficult for people, continues to be difficult for people. But what I've seen through the legislative efforts to try to help stabilize the foundations and through right. business savvy to try to use this to both stabilize themselves, take care of their employees, serve their customers, and grow. And that's the great thing. In the midst of all this, on top of the stabilization and caring for employees and customers, businesses are looking to grow. And that makes a difference. And that drive, that business drive to survive, to thrive, has made a huge difference. Within your practice areas of corporate and business law, mergers and acquisitions, venture capital, and corporate finance, where do you expect to see the most demand in 2021? A lot of activity in the M&A space. Businesses are selling, businesses are buying. What's interesting about this situation is even though there's incredible disruption, valuations, we've seen the stock market, valuations are going up and valuations among businesses are going up. So when, the, when we went through the crash in 2008, what happened was there was a complete drop in valuations and there was a standstill because Sellers didn't want to sell at low valuations. Buyers didn't want to buy at high valuations. Investors didn't want to invest in businesses at high valuations. And that kind of had a domino effect. Well, here, to the extent a business is able to continue to thrive and survive and innovate in new areas, which we're seeing technologically people are doing, valuations are maintaining at robust levels and activities going on. So I think 21 will be a continuation, um, but even more, even more so, because I think that the optimism that's coming forward is going to fuel a lot of continued activity in the marketplace. Are you seeing any specific creativity in uh, lines to what you said there in Atlanta? Everywhere. I mean, seriously, in, when I look around Atlanta, and I'm in the office just about every day. I see people just about every day. I talk to people like I'm doing with you virtually every day. And what I'm seeing is just incredible optimism. People seem to be focused on living. And living means living. It means getting out there, getting out of their shelters. We've all been sheltered long enough. We have to still be safe. We wear our masks. We socially distance. We do we observe the protocols that we should observe, but we got to stop just fighting each other. We got to start thriving together. And I'm seeing more and more of that in, in business. Absolutely. It's, I actually think business can be a great model for what we can do societally in that businesses have to work together when they come from different interests, explore mutually mutual areas that really allow them to take advantage of opportunities that benefit everyone, take care of their employees, take care of their customers, take care of their communities. And we're seeing business, I think, lead us through paths that I think government and I think uh, people with their strong opinions about things will start to follow over time. So I'm, I'm really seeing that as a, a great path force. Forth. I'm really optimistic about that. Over the past year, how has technology permanently transformed the legal sector? And how will these changes ultimately benefit the businesses and individuals that you work with? 
I was visiting my mother a month ago. She's 83. Um, we've stayed away from her to protect her, but she needed her family to be with her. So I went to visit her to help take care of her. Technology allowed me to not miss a beat because I was able to be with my mother, take care of, take care of her, you know, the, do the kinds of things that sons do to take care of their aging mothers. And at the same time, have a headpiece in my ear, be on my iPhone, be in a conference call, move into a room next door and have a Zoom call as though I were sitting in my office with here, like I am with talking to you. All that's technology. I'm thinking back when I started practicing law and I first got into business, you were either at your office desk or you weren't working. Correct. And you were suited up at your office desk and you had very limited freedom to do your job other than right there and then. Now we can do our job from everywhere. And I think that is an incredible liberating technology that allows us to live our lives more fully and be highly, highly productive. With the lack of in-person interaction caused by remote work, how has your firm transformed the apprenticeship model in order to acclimate young uh, new hires when they join? That's, that's kind of the toughest. That's the toughest thing because we don't really, we're not missing out on the productivity. We have great professionals and good businesses have great professionals and they know what to do. They know how to be successful. They've spent their whole life being successful. So in, on the productivity front, I would say we don't really miss out. What I worry about, and my worry is all about focused solutions, I want our younger people to be mentored. And they, it's difficult to be mentored if you're in a cave not seeing people and just doing the tasks. And if you just do that, you might be productive, but you're gonna commoditize who you are and what you are. So I try to, to put aside the commoditized productivity portion of a person's life and focus on the interpersonal exchange between people. That to me is where the magic is. So the magic of what we do is people working together and being together. So I push our people to be together virtually, telephonically, socially distanced physically, and just really in all ways. Now we have to be creative because it can't just be one way. It's got to be multiple ways. And that's good too, because it's causing us to learn to be good communicators in different means. I'm thinking, like I'm enjoying talking with you. And I'm thinking when I first, a year ago, when I first did these Zoom calls, I was super, super unsure of how to communicate to, pers to a person on the screen because I'm a people person and I'm having to learn. And it's through lots of mistakes and lots of errors and feeling, feeling, you know, unsure about my footings. And that's what we're doing as a business. We're training our people by saying to our younger people, go be mentored, go seek out your mentors go seek out your sponsors. And then we're saying to our, our more senior people, go take these people and make sure that they're being successful as, as in a wholesome way and, and in a full way so that they can really have successful lives because we're gonna thrive by great talent being, being talented. You have just mentioned that last year put you in uncomfortable situations and it did for the majority of us. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you have personally transformed? A lot. I mean, I've had to, I've had to, first of all, I've had to be super productive. I mean, I, I, I wear multiple hats. One hat is I, the head of our mergers and acquisitions group here in the Atlanta office. So I've got to be very, very focused on the needs of our clients and I can't let our clients suffer. In fact, I have to make sure our clients have never done better. That's my, that's my job. Another hat I wear is I run a booming office. And in that respect, I have to make sure we continue to do better now than ever before. Now, there are winds that blow against you sometime, but the way I work is 
cast aside the wins, always go forward and be successful, no excuses. I'm a no excuse type of person. When I step back, sometimes there are factors I can't control, but I'm a no excuses person in terms of how I proceed. So I've had to be hyper-focused on making sure our office was booming. So that's all the success in business. But I had to make sure my people, the people around me were okay. So then you add a whole new dimension of emotional well-being and separation. And there's a whole psychological and philosophical and social component to humanity that causes us to be together and thrive. And that's my job is to make sure that the people around me who I care about thrive in a time of incredible uncertainty. So you got to be super optimistic and you got to really, really be, you have to trust that through your hard work, your optimism, your people, that you will make things happen. And it's really easy not to be that way. It's really easy to feel lots of doubt and to feel a level of despair and to feel isolated. Because what I love about what I do is not just the work, it's the fun of being with people. I like to travel. I like to go out. I like to go have lunches with people, dinners, drinks. I like the, the office. I like running into people in the office. That part hasn't been around. And, and so I've had to make myself create the relationships in ways different than I've done in the past. Of course. Well, thank you again. That was Ted Bloom, the managing shareholder of Greenberg Traurig of the Atlanta office. My name is Abby Maloney and you've been watching Invest Insights. Ted, thank you again. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. Hey everyone. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date on the latest business trends from our knowledgeable experts. Be sure to check out the description below for more information on the segment you just watched. Thanks for tuning in.